So this segment is, is about your rights as a precinct committee person. So how many of the room have watched the video of the, um, of the Democratic Convention in 2016 in Nevada? The one that was very long. It was a 16-hour convention, not the greatest planning in the world. 16-hour convention, 3,400 people attending. Uh, they did not provide food, but they provided three bars. Um, and, it, you know, if it sounds like a recipe for disaster, that's, that's pretty much what they got. Um, you, the, the most famous pieces of the video are of um, uh, Roberta Lang, the chair, uh, making rulings uh, based on voice vote um, that people were not quite clear that she was ruling in the way that the, the people voted in the convention. And it ends with her gaveling the session closed. So. There are a number of things that went wrong with that, including clarity on uh, who was credentialed to be in, at that convention to vote. And so this is why it is so important for you to know your rights as a member of a democratic um, organization so you know what to expect and what to demand and know when your rights are being taken away. And if you watch the whole video, this is how the event ended. It was with a lineup of uh, Nevada police officers <laughs> guarding the stage so the, the uh, enraged crowd does not uh, rush the facility and tear it apart or whatever they thought they were going to do. So your rights as a precinct committee person are defined in these documents in this order. So uh, you can go to the Oregon statutes and these you can also look at online. Uh, and see what the, what the state law uh, grants you as a precinct committee person. Uh, your county central committee bylaws um, are the governing document in each of the counties. And then for things that are not specified in the county bylaws, uh, it defaults to Robert's rules of order. So your rights as a precinct committee person you were entitled to full participation in the proceedings, including attending meetings, making motions, speaking in debate, voting, and any basic right associated with these rights, like making nominations. And these rights cannot be taken away from you, except uh, unless you've been bad and, and you have disciplinary action taken against you. Yeah. Those are the basic rights to all precinct committee persons, both appointed and elected. So, non-CCP Democrats, do they have those rights? No, not in the, not in the um, uh, central committee, which you are a member of. So, by being elected or appointed as a precinct committee person, you become a member of that organization and are entitled to these rights. Um, so, uh, t meetings are typically open. Uh, it is not a right for a non-precinct committee person to speak at a meeting unless the, the, that, that, that right is being is extended to them. Any other questions? So uh, knowledge is power. Uh, you need to guard your rights by knowing what they are. Uh, don't approve documents like convention rules that you've not reviewed. Um, uh, particular areas to watch out for are uh, how credentialing is done. That was one of the pitfalls with the, um, the Nevada Convention. There was a lot of ambiguity. There was some ambiguity over who was eligible to vote because they apparently couldn't track down some of the people who had registered. And it wasn't a big deal. It made a difference ultimately of possibly two delegates that ended up uh, going to the Democratic National Convention for one of the candidates over the other. But uh, credentialing is critically important because that determines who gets to vote, and there are a lot of votes end up being uh, very close, and so the difference of one or two people voting could make a difference in, in the outcome. Um, you know, things like the agenda, we often assume that the agenda is fine, uh, but uh, at the very beginning of the meeting, if the meeting is run in a democratic manner, you are asked to approve the agenda and you have the opportunity to amend the agenda because it is the majority will of the body who determines how you're gonna spend your time. If the majority wants to spend the hour playing bingo, that is their right to do so. Um, you, you do not have agendas forced upon you. 
Uh, an exception would be as if the agenda outline has been specified in the bylaws, uh, and then you have to follow what the bylaws state. Uh, and then you have to watch out for limits on members' rights. So uh, one of the things that you should be provided as a precinct committee person uh, in your county is a copy of the bylaws of the organization. And that is the governing document that uh, defines uh, how events happen and uh, what you can do as a member and when you can speak and if there's limits on your ability to speak and those sorts of things. So I would highly recommend you take a copy of your bylaws and familiarize them yourself with them and then make sure that the leadership follows them. So if you really want to understand your rights, um, uh, uh, you should study Robert's Rules of Order. Uh, I've been studying these for around 20 years, and um, it wasn't until the last couple of years that the fundamental concepts really started uh, becoming obvious or apparent to me. Um, if you would like to uh, join a study group, um, there's two ways to do it. In the Portland area, there are... Um, um, uh, three groups that meet uh, monthly to discuss Robert's Rules of Order and, and to, to learn them and practice them. Um, we are starting a virtual group for all those people who cannot drive to the Portland metro area from the rest of the state, and what we will be doing is studying Robert's Rules of Order virtually, and you can do that by going to pdpo.org and signing up. And there's links there also to the National Association of Parliamentarians website and to the uh, Oregon Association of Parliamentarians, which are the organizations that, that, that sponsor the teaching here. And we can help you um, become a member of the National Association of Parliamentarians if you'd like. And you can also uh, take the exams, become a professional parliamentarian if you would, if you would like to do so. Is there any questions on your rights? And so these are the fundamental rights that, that are associated with parliamentary procedure apart from Robert's Rules of Order upon which they are based. So attending meetings, making motions, speaking in debate, and voting are all fundamental rights guarante guaranteed for you in, in a democratically run organization. Yes? Uh, you can get them from contacting your county organization. So. Um, the Democratic Party of Oregon website has a list of all of the counties in Oregon. You can click on your county, and that'll give you the contact information of the officers, and they would be delighted to provide you with the bylaws.